book of 1 Corinthians, we will read chapter number 2. We thank God for each one of us and for bringing you here in the house of God to hear his word. May the Lord speak to each one of us. Amen. Amen. And when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much troubling. And my speech and my message were not principal words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power, that your faith might not last in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Wisdom, yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed among before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they would, have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So that also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the Lord, but the Spirit of whom is from God, that we might understand the things that freely given us by God. And we impart this in the words, not taught by human reason, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truth to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foreign to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things by himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Lord, we honor your name. We ask you, Lord, speak to each one of us. May your word edify us, Lord. May your word transform our lives. Spirit of God, come and speak to each one of us. And I ask you, Lord, use me as your vessel of honor to pass your word in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. The spiritual and the natural man. Each one of us, when we walk aloud, we want to walk freely and we want to attain our dreams and we want to give ourselves what we want to get in this world. But there is a difference between the spiritual man and the natural man. And Paul says, when I came to you, Corinthians, I did not come with lofty words, but when I came to you, I sought to know nothing else apart from Christ crucified. And when I was with you, I spoke to you the word of God in fear and in trembling. Somebody said God-centered ministry. Shout again, God's center ministry. Apostle Paul, when he was ministering to the Corinthians, his ministry was fully centered on God. The, the way he treated people, the way he perceived the people of God, his way of dealing with people, he was basing himself fully on God. And God is looking for men and women of God who shall base their ministry, who shall center their life on God and God alone. How could Yeshua Sha'am Akubaliya say when he was preaching the gospel? He did not use words to attract attention to himself. But when he was with those people, his eloquence was not the most important thing. His, the way of presenting the gospel was not to attract any attention to himself. So he did not use lofty words. And he did not seek to know anything among us, the people, apart from Jesus Christ and him alone crucified. 
He did not seek that they would give a lot of tithing so that his bag could go home loaded. He did not seek that they could come and visit him and adorn his house with goodies. The only thing he was interested in that fellowship is to know Christ and know him crucified. Somebody say amen. amen. And I don't know what we look for in the house of God. I don't know what to bring us in the midst of other brethren. But one thing that made Paul continue on ministering to these people was not anything else. Meaning you can be in ministry with other agendas. You can be in ministry because you want to do well financially. You can be in ministry because maybe you want to build a five bedroom house or drive a four wheel car. But among us the Corinthians, Paul did not seek anything else apart from Christ and him crucified. Somebody say amen. amen. And I pray that whenever we come in the house of God, our core interest is to know Jesus and him crucified. Our core interest would be to know the Lord and all his ways because all our ministry should be centered on God and God alone. If there would be no motivation for us to continue ministering, let the fact that Christ has called us, let the fact that we are serving God, the owner of this kingdom, let that be the sole motivation of us being in the house of God and us being in ministry. Christ's God-centered ministry. He did not seek to be a big man of God. He did not seek to be a powerful man of God, but he sought to only make known to them this Jesus who is crucified. Some say Christ was crucified. And among us, these Corinthians, he walked with fear and trembling. What an apostle to walk in fear and trembling. He had a revelation that could be and may mishandle the word of God and could be and may not preach in the perfect way and it could be and may not be able to deliver excellent as the Lord expect of me because I'm not good enough so he walked in fear and trembling. He did not walk in self-confidence. He, he did not uh, walk in much knowledge he had from his former studies. Despite the fact he was the apostle of God, he walked in fear and trembling amongst the Christians. And, and, and this is the attitude each one of us should have whenever we come in the house of God. Despite where we are coming from, despite what we own and what we have in our circles, we should walk in what? Fear and trembling. It's just by the grace of God that you can be in a position to handle the word of God. It's just by the grace of God that he allows you to come in his holy presence. Mortal man like you, sinner like you, yet he allows you to come in his presence. Yet he allows you to handle his holy objects and his matters of kingdom. Who are you for God to give you such a privilege? And, and Paul had the, 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 the revelation. It's by grace of God. It's not because I've worked for it. It's not because I'm qualified to do it. I am a pastor commissioned by Christ in person. Yet, I walk with fear and trembling. Somebody say walking in fear and trembling. Because we have missed the fear and trembling component of our calling in Christ Jesus. It's easy when we want people to serve us. And we don't want them to serve God. We want them to serve us. Because the complement of the fear and trouble in the calling of the Lord is no longer in our churches. It's no longer in our work. It's no longer in our midst. But the Lord is calling each and every Christian. Each and every minister of the word of God. When we are dealing with matters, the kingdom of God, we walk in what? In fear and trouble. Fear because we are not good enough yet. It's by the grace of God. Trembling because we have not perfected it. 
Nobody has perfected it. No, no, nobody is doing it in perfection. And let alone Paul says, I'm still striving to mark of what? Perfection. He was not yet there, so he walked in fear and trouble. Can we have Christians who come in the house of God and their attitude is in the house of God? We are here by grace, not by qualification. And so our attitude is reverence in the house of God. And the words we speak are not human wisdom. His ministration was not based on human wisdom. His ministration was based on the understanding of the Spirit. I do not persuade you in your laughter words. But in my ministration, all I was seeking is to demonstrate the power of the Spirit. Somebody said the power of the Spirit. The wisdom of man is good. But for Paul, he did not do ministry with the wisdom of man. He did ministry under the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to call upon each and every man and woman of God, each and every Christian. This thing cannot be done by human effort, by human wisdom. We must allow the Spirit to be at work. And he was seeking to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say the power of the Holy Spirit. Curriculums and programs are good, but besides that, what moves and increases the kingdom of God is when the Spirit of God is at work. Somebody say the Spirit of God. We cannot kick out the Holy Spirit from our ministries, from our churches, and, and we see the advancement of the kingdom of God. He was not keen on philosophies and the wisdoms of the people of this world. He was in Corinthians. To demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. And I trust God that each one of us will desire whenever they are given a chance to lead the praise and worship. To allow the Spirit to work within us. Whenever we are given a chance to welcome people in the house of God who submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Whenever we go for this door to door knocking on the people's doors, we allow the Spirit of God to work within us. Because when the power of God is at work, the kingdom advances. And all our ministry, we must seek to see the power of God at work. Somebody shall amen. amen. And when the church in Kenya will allow the spirit of God to be at work, we are going to see many come to the kingdom of God. Because no one will come to the kingdom of God unless the spirit of God will draw them to himself. Any kind of human effort will be futile because even in the beginning, the early church did not depend on human effort, human wisdom. They are dependent on the working of the Holy Spirit. And the things he taught them, nobody could understand them if they were not in the Spirit. And he says, we proclaim the secret wisdom of God. So there is the wisdom of man, the philosophies, the motivations, the psychology. There is the wisdom of God and there is the wisdom of man. And Paul was given to them the secret of the, of the kingdom of God. Somebody says the secret of God. What is this? From the beginning, God had a plan to save mankind. And he had a plan to use his only begotten son. And from the time beginning, nobody understood that. The kings of this world did not understand because it was a secret, a mystery in the kingdom of God. And they could not understand. And what Paul was releasing them out with is the mysteries of God. But this plan of God, the kings could not understand. God saw it wise to reveal it to us. 
that Christ is the only way to God. Christ is the only way to receive salvation. And it was mysterious to them. It was a secret to them. And I want to submit to us even today. Billions and upon billions in this world have not yet caught this mysterious truth that Christ is the only way to God. Christ is the only source of our salvation. Millions upon millions in this nation still have not understood this mystery that the only person who gives the eternal life is who? Christ Jesus. They are still not understanding it. And one of the things Paul was revealing to these people is that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And in this generation, most of us have ignored this truth. Yes, we have had it, but do we care? Yes, we have had it, but we have better things to focus on. And so we ignore the secret of the kingdom, the truth about the kingdom, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if they had known he is the king of glory, they could not have crucified him. Because they did not understand anything, it was still a secret to them. They could not understand it, and so they crucified him. And so the scripture asks, if they had known the one they are crucified is the king of glory, they could not have done so. Why? Because when they crucified him, they dethroned their own master, the devil. By the virtue of them opposing Jesus and going ahead crucifying him on the cross, they actually dethroned their master, the devil, and now Christ Jesus is on the throne. Because they do not understand anything. By them crucifying him, in fact, they were contributing to his glorification. They were contributing to his accomplishing the mission he had on this world. Because they do not understand, praise be to Jesus, the secrets of the kingdom. They, they cannot be understood by human wisdom. And he says to them, the things God has kept for us, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, because it's still a secret. Nobody has heard of it. You see, people are coming with movies and all these kind of things, like they are surprises. But the things God has kept for us, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Still a mystery, still a secret. But us who are in the spirit, we understand. Very soon and very soon, we are going to live with Christ Jesus, with everlasting king of glory forever and ever. Very soon God is going to bring a new heaven and we shall dwell with him forever and ever. Somebody say amen. amen. And some may think this is foolishness because even those times they could not understand the mysteries of the kingdom. It is not foolishness. I want to submit to you brothers and sisters, wherever you are hearing us from, that this is not foolishness. The fact that Christ is coming back again is not foolishness. The fact that we are going to live with him forever and ever is not foolishness. The fact that we don't understand it does not mean it will never come to be. Praise be to Jesus. What God has kept for us, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard. We can only imagine. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Because the things of the Lord, we can understand them only through the Spirit. And he cautions them. A natural person will never receive from the Spirit. Somebody say a natural person. Natural. Now there are three kinds of people. There's a natural person, the way his mother or her mother gave birth to him or her. Naturally, they have five senses. They can taste, they, 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 they can smell. They have the five common senses and they live naturally. And the natural person cannot receive from the Spirit. They cannot discern the things of the Spirit. Because they are what? They are natural. Because spiritual things are spiritually designed. So this natural person will never receive the things of God. As simple as that. And for them to receive the things of God, they must be born in spirit. Somebody say in spirit. spirit. 
for you to receive the views of God, you must show a man. You must allow yourself to be born in water and wet. Spell it. For you to receive the views of the kingdom. So, so don't be surprised if what ministers of the world speak is weird. It's funny. You yeah, heard some people say that is funny. But no, 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 don't be surprised when these things sound foolish and funny to you. Because could be a natural person, but tonight God is calling you to be born in spirit through salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. And he says this natural man can never receive from the Lord. And this the second kind of a person who is spiritual and also national, hybrid. They are called what? Carnal. Carnal men. They, they, they can receive. They pursue the things of the spirit when they are in flesh. And they are in the spirit, but still they are pursuing the things of the flesh. They are apokatikat. Wamechaga nikiwa. Praise be to Jesus. They are hybrids. And the Lord is not calling for us to be kind of people. He is calling us to be purely spiritual people. Somebody says spiritual people. Because spiritual people can design the things of the spirit. The enemy fights us, brings us down through deception. Through what? Deception. Anytime the enemy succeeds to bring somebody down, one of the tools he uses is what? Deception. One of the things that, that the enemy will uh, expressively use in your life is deception. And he will make you live a depressed life. He will make you live a suspicious life. Anytime you see a person, you think they are gossiping about you. Every time you see a person, you think they have evil motives against you. Deception. The, so the, the tool the enemy uses to bring down Christians is what? Deception. From the beginning. Did he say that if you eat this tree, 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 uh, fruit, you do everything? Did he say really? Deception. He uses deception to bring down people of God. But the Spirit of God, what He gives us is discernment. Somebody say discernment. Amen. Somebody shout discernment. Amen. And discernment is not given to a natural person. Discernment is given to a spiritual person so that you may know when the enemy is deceiving them. So one of the things the spiritual man should always pray to the Lord to give him or her is discernment. Somebody say discernment. And he encourages the Corinthians. A natural man cannot perceive the things of the spirit because they are not designed by spiritual men. And I ask the Lord that he will body of Christ in this nation. He will release discernment. Because when the discernment is there, nobody will deceive the women and women of God. Nobody will take people of God for a light. Nobody will manipulate the people of God. Nobody will be in a position to lead, lead astray men and women of God. Because they have what? Discernment. When there is false teachings, people with discernment, they will know this is false teaching. When we are being misadvised, people with discernment, they will know we are being when you enter a place and there is a spirit that is not is a spirit not from God, when there is discernment in your life through the spirit of God, you know really this is not the spirit of God. When somebody uses the scripture, but for the wrong motives, when there is discernment in your life, you know yes, they are reading the Bible. True. But the motives behind these people is not good, discernment. And so when the spiritual man awakes and the discernment is operating in them, the enemy cannot bring them down. Somebody shout amen. Even when you are dealing with people, when you are discussing even general views of life, yeah, you want to marry me, Lila? You are serious. But because you are spiritual lady, you design. Ah, no, no, no. There's something wrong with this brother. Somebody say designment. 
No, you are producing a good deal in business? Yes. But you, you don't look straight in your promises. Something deep within you tells you this deal is good, but the end of it all will not be good. Discernment. Because the, the enemy will even be goodest in our lives. But if we don't have discernment, we will not know the end result of all these goodness will be our own downfall. We will not know unless we have what? Discernment. That's why it is important for us to be spiritual men. Because when we are spiritual men and women of God, we will have discernment in our lives and the enemy will not lead any person astray. And these spiritual men, nobody should judge them. What a statement. Last Saturday we were talking about judging, condemning. But here in the book of Corinthians, this man Paul emphasizes, these spiritual guys, nobody should judge them. Why? Because the Spirit of God is at work within them. They have known the truth and lies. They live not their own life, but they live in life according to the leading of the Spirit of God. So, if we have any man who is natural outside there, why should they judge the people who are spiritual? And in fact, somewhere in the Gospel, Jesus said, if you are people who know God, don't quarrel among us yourself and go to a northern judge to judge you, because you should agree among us yourselves. And here Paul emphasizes these spiritual men, nobody should judge them. Praise be to Jesus. When it's very wrong for you who knows the truth, unless it's persecution, for us to reach a level of being judged by national people because of our misbehaviors. If we are even not spiritual men, then the way we conduct ourselves, the way we carry out ourselves, should put us in a position a natural man has nothing to leverage against us. Because we are walking by the Spirit. This spiritual man should not be judged by any person because they have the mind of Christ. Someone say, I have the mind of Christ. Shout, I have the mind of Christ. If I have the mind of Christ and you have your degrees, your degrees will not go beyond the mind of Christ. Because Christ, the hope of glory, dwells in me and my mind has been filled with his mind. I have the mind of Christ. But when does this happen? No, it happens when I give my life to Jesus. Not really. We continuously think the things of God judge things according to the way God can judge them, perceive things the way God perceives them when we consistently spend time with Him. Somebody says, Spend time with Him. If you have no time with God, don't go out there claiming to have the mind of Christ. You have the minds of so populous. No, 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 you have the mind of movies. True. You have the minds of magazines. Yes. Yeah, you love the mind of your idols and celebs. Yes, that is why you spend your power. With the people who have the mind of Christ, they spend time with who? Christ. Show me your flesh and I'll tell you what kind of a person you are. If the, your friend is Jesus, you are like Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. If every morning you wake up and you spend time with the King of Glory, Jesus Himself, you know, you are not demanding your time. No, 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 no. I'm giving you two minutes. You never have His mind. If yours is a part within with you, then forget His mind. You must go to a point of spending time with Him, spending time with the Scriptures, and you get the mind of Christ. And this spiritual man, let not a natural man judge you. Because they have the mind of Christ. How I pray tonight that, that when we come in the house of God, that when we are dealing with men and women of God, our fellow brothers and sisters, we, we shall handle them with care. Somebody say care. Yeah. We shall handle them with the same attitude Paul had with Corinthians. He handled them and dealt with them with fear and trembling. Our prayer when God gives us a platform, we shall not seek to demonstrate anything, gymnastics and the less, but we shall seek to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Our prayer 
that we shall desire to be the spiritual man, not the carnal man, not the natural man, the spiritual man who have discernment, the spiritual man who have the might of Christ. Somebody shout amen.